Hey guys, Elven Prince here, back with something very different. This is probably old news by the time this video gets out, but Jeff, uh, Jeff Williams, the lead, uh, music writer or whatnot of Rooster Teeth and specifically Ruby. He, at least that's how I know him, him from the work he did with the Ruby songs and all that, is going to be leaving, or he's going to be stepping down and his daughter Casey Williams, who's featured in a lot of the music, will be taking his place at the helm. So, to celebrate the end of the era, I'm going to be going through each of the volume albums and saying specifically which songs are my favorite from each and why. There is going to be one honorable mention in it, but it's a song I only recently found out about and just thought I'd bring it across your guys' radar as well. So. I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend and all that. It's snowy over here where I am. Lovely skiing weather. I've been enjoying it. And hopefully you guys will as well. So, putting past all of the small minutia and squabbles we have, you know, I will he'll also be doing a Ruby fight analysis eventually, just not in the mood to do that. Putting all our differences aside, let's just go over some music that I personally enjoy. I will admit I have a bias towards either slower melodic pieces or stuff like Sabaton, but mostly it's just going to be slow melodic pieces. But without any further ado, Let's get started. Starting out with volume one, we have I May Fall. Technically, this one does show up in volume three, but it's posted on the volume one soundtrack, so I think it's fair game. Of course, the opening, This Will Be The Day, is iconic and always will be, but I... I always have enjoyed I May Fall. So, we're gonna give it a listen, and from there we'll all just go over what I'm enjoying about it. Something that I enjoy is just a chugging guitar. Something you see a bit with, like, uh... Bury the light. Trading the vocals. It's wonderful. Just gonna let it run a bit while we soak it in. This is probably one of the more iconic moments, you know, when the bell is pulling out the right here. And this era of the show, well, it did have its flaws. It also was the reason why a lot of people got into this series. You know. First time I've heard that car in the background. Wild to think Casey was like what? Or, yeah, Casey Williams in this era. She was like early teens, right? I mean, having a musician for a father will certainly help with your musical talent, but. You know, it's just, I think it also helps 
because you do have some natural talent. That's what she has a band now. Okay, good night. I think that's what it's called. I know it was featured in Volume 8. And haven't done a soundtrack reaction to that just because I'm. Was well, not my cup of tea. And I'm sure that you will appreciate that. Jeffrey Shetland, because you're always complaining about me complaining. Pulling out the instrumental to get a bit more vulnerable or whatnot, then just pick right back up. And you've got a bit of that chugging guitar and bass in the background. The uh, bum ba da bum 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 ba da bum bum of the drums. It's wild to me just how iconic uh, Casey Williams' voice has become and how synonymous that is with Ruby, at least to me. But I also don't engage with a lot of RT's other projects, but yeah. I mean, other than the occasional Red vs. Blue video I did, but haven't touched those for a while. Yeah, that was Volume 1. I May Fall technically shows up in Volume 3, but that's, I think it's just a nice baseline for the music. Next we've got Volume 2, and I'm sure you can tell up there if you truly care. Mostly what I'm using is Flint of Ruby, on YouTube and the Jeff Williams Topic channel. You know, one of those ones that gets automatically generated. Next up, we have, in my opinion, the best opening for Ruby with visuals and music. This one just it hits a certain spot for me. I wonder what ended up happening to Flint of Ruby. Because I know he dropped out for a while. Just that swell up. And then that racing drum beat. You know, just got me pushing it forward. And then we switch to the chorus. Huh, didn't realize that, at least according to this bit of glimp here, it's matched to different uh, people with each year. I mean, it makes sense, because the red like roses with the trailer, that also is linked with some people, but... And that's when it ends. I yeah, that's when it would have ended for the OT. That behind up with the guitar. When I said I enjoy a lot of the slower, more of the walk, the walk pieces, it's either going to be slow and melodic. Or, or with huge soaring guitar. An example for that of me is like Boston. Uh, Mark Knopfler is a good example of a combination. Well, 
looking back, this is... I mean, according to Ozpin, you guys more or less are just cannon fodder to uh, be pushed at Salem to delay it. And that could be used for ironwood in these seasons. But I, I have thoughts about that, and you guys know them, but... We're not here for that at the moment. I'll probably add in some sparse commentary along those lines. That, that building guitar, just sort of that frantic guitar run. This is some of the stuff I like, you know, just that those guitar runs going up and down. Trying to figure out who that other voice is, because it might just be he, Casey Williams still. But it sounds a bit too. Not sure if mature is the right word, but doesn't sound exactly like Casey, at least in the other verses we hear her. And yeah, this is. By far my favorite opening and one of the better songs, or not necessarily one of the better songs, but some of the more iconic ones of this era. One through three, those volumes, in my opinion, have had the best songs out of any era in Ruby as a whole. There are some huge standouts later down the line, which we will see, but... That's the point where I feel Ruby was consistently good. And when I said I really enjoyed slow melodic pieces, this is what I mean. And if I recall correctly, this was meant to be more or less a tribute to Monty. It's wild looking back at Ruby, how it started out as just, you know, girls doing cool fights, loosely strung together by plot points, and now, you know, we're where we are with huge overarching plot lines, and... To some extent, I miss this, but more musically, the piano in the background, just with the voice layered on top of it, I, the, like I said, the slow and somber stuff will always hold a special place in my heart musically. This era, I think, I think everyone does look back on it with a bit of rose-tinted goggle glasses, but there was something special about this, you know. Ruby being a small web series by a, at least from my understanding, a while well-known web company for stuff like Red vs. Blue. It wasn't the behemoth it is now. Getting into a whole bunch of shit. You know, owned by Warner Brothers. Getting into a crossover movie with the Justice League. It was just... I mean, like Ruby itself. Small. Or relatively small. Nice, enjoyable chill it's 
And if I'm trying to do songs written mostly by Jeff Williams, so if I do mess something up, please just, you know, politely let me know. I'm just going with songs that I particularly enjoy from each volume. This has been a trip down memory lane for me, just, you know, looking back at the series. Looking back at the series without, you know, looking back on the series just from a point of knowing where it is right now, for better or worse, and what all that brings. And for me, we're into volume four. This was the transition from uh, Maya to Poser, I believe. Again, feel free to correct me. And I've always called this, so there's what, Mirror Mirror, part one, which is in the trailer, part two, two, you got 1.5, which, or 2.5, which is in, uh, whatchamacallit, the, I'll think, uh, it's, no, not Path to Isolation. That's in the different trailer. I'll... Again, just going into the music itself. You can hear the stepping piano. The oboe in the background. The instrument I play. I like, yeah, the more melodic stepping piano stuff, which explains why I am a bit, I uh, enjoy Weiss's themes a bit more, as that is mostly what her themes make of, and dear God, I cannot imagine trying to walk around in those heels. Small mixing thing, but I am, no, I am no authority in this whatsoever. I would probably raise her, her, her voice in the mix a little bit, because it's getting a little bit buried. And we have the soaring strings, then the chugging guitars. That is probably one of my favorite ways to use guitars. It's just that the sound. Just a simple drum beat in the background. But yeah, I I really enjoyed all of Weiss's songs, which moving back to what I was going with before is partially what stems my disappointment during the Atlas arc because that should have been her moment to shine you know but didn't really get that shifting back again to the music I need to stay focused and you can hear uh, Casey Williams vocal uh, skills just changing throughout the different volumes. And is that, yeah, that's Ein Lee's cover music. Pity what happened with her getting chased out of the community and all that, from my understanding. And now we go for the 
sliding guitar are taking the forefront. Yep, that run. I find that the runs, or the guitar runs, are always interesting with this. Not genre, but show. The soundtracks tend to have good guitar runs. Volume 4, or for all its problems, I think is still largely accepted by the community. Just I think purely because it was a transitionary period after Monty sadly passed away. And we can, back to the music, you can hear a bit of... Uh, Jeff Williams in the background but we do see that she, uh, Casey is largely the taking helm of the music at this point going forward and at least with vocalage he was and this is just my guess he was probably always more in the chair composing stuff while Casey Nee Williams was more at the forefront singing and she's doing a wonderful job. Okay. Did not want to do that. Well, hell, I did mention the honorable mention with the song I just found. This is it. Lucis Naturel. Uh, Lucis Nutere. Lucis Natura. Lucis Natura. Been a while since I, I had my Latin class. But this is a song I just found. Apparently it came from Ruby Grim Eclipse. That game I completely forgot about. And I think a lot of people did. Haven't heard anything about it, good or bad, but gonna give this a listen to and you know for everyone who's like oh this is a blind reaction to the music of this series and whatnot this honestly is a blind reaction for me i know jack squat about this game the music or anything about it just decided it'd be interesting to you know throw this here Okay, definitely going for a bit more of a creepy vibe. And subtitles are not an option. Gonna see if I can pull them up on my phone. Uh, it's Freak of Nature. Uh, it's Uh, do you think they're trying to get an idea across that the subject of the song is a bit of a wackadoo? Okay. Is this, did the villain of that game try to go about the whole sentient grim thing? Because if not, this also could be the making mention of Salem, but I don't think the whole uh, hound was a thing in that era, at least that I'm aware of. Yeah, this is this is more of just William singing style, at least from what I can tell. 
This is stuff like uh, Bad Luck Charm. You know, like that sort of thing. Especially the Volume 3 opening, which, fun fact, is bottom of my list for openings. I am not a fan of that one. Uh, we'll see the place. Huh, I mean, there is most definitely an uh, ongoing theme through this. And it is not towards my, towards the upper echelon in terms of Ruby songs. It's all right. There are most definitely worse songs, in my opinion. Mainly looking at Big Metal Shoe. Not a fan of that variety. I mean... I think if I had the context of the game, of which I think this might be like the ending credits piece, I'd be able to provide more meaningful commentary. But, I mean, for the meantime, this is just, all right. This does, in my opinion, fall a bit more into the whole What's the term I've heard used a bit more for butt metal that is sometimes associated with Ruby? Like I said, it's alright. Certainly not my cup of tea, but... Definitely going for a bit more raspy vocalage and that variety. But on to... Mirror Mirror Part 4, 5, I don't know at this point, Voice has gotten the most character themes, I'm not sure how many Ruby's gotten, but she probably could use some more. We've got the soft vocals over the piano. Yep, you've got a bit of that stepping piano again. Yep, I'm Lee again for the art. In my opinion, this is probably due to some bias of my own. The strongest that this variety of music is what uh, Casey Williams' voice is strongest in. Because at least what I've slightly seen or heard would be the correct word is I think Jeff Williams, you know, he has a melody, he, he has some lyrics, then he tries to fit the two together, which occasionally, instead of having the, it just be a flush image, will get it a bit off in some places. And that most definitely is a style invocative of the early 2000s. And it does have its place, but... Again, it is not my cup of tea. Meanwhile, this song... Yep, that soaring up. Piano. The strings in the background. A bit more orchestral.
you've got that guitar in the background with the dun 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 Just the driving beat of the drums. It's well put together. I mean, since I've done a little commentary on each volume with it, Volume 5 is probably the weakest volume as a whole. There was a lot of teasing fights that we didn't get a seat, and I think that might have been a budgetary issue. But for a series based completely around fighting with a story made up afterwards, I think that that's putting a bit of the cart before the horse, which has resulted in some people being a bit less forgiving towards some of the mistakes in this volume. I personally find the second half of volume 6 to be the weakest part of the entire series. Mostly. But... If we're just judging on pure volume standards, Volume 5 is most likely the weakest. And Ignite did not make the cut, I just forgot to pause it when I was talking. Alright, now, Volume 6. Again, I think you might be seeing a trend. Slower pieces are more often than not taking the helm for me. If we'll just start back over. You've got that piano just running in the background. And I believe this was created as a tribute piece for Monty as well. And thank you Morgana for putting these videos up. Check them out. They were the other main inspiration. Uh, this very much is a tribute piece through and through. The other one I had earlier I feel like that was more retrofitted as a tribute piece, where that wasn't its entire purpose, but this is the entire thing, as opposed to, you know, it being retrofitted, like I said. Makes you wonder what the series would look like had he not unfortunately passed away. But again, you've got the piano voice on top of that. The strings in the background the light drums just doing the da 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 piano emphasizing the words these songs are all of them very well put together I don't think I've seen a song that I had a major complaint through and through with the actual composition and editing it was a small thing earlier you know just with where the voice was in the mix and like i said earlier you can really feel the evolution of casey williams vocal range and vocal range and just skill grow with each volume. 
that that little swell into the hit I'm Lee's art again At, like I've been saying, I feel you've got Jeff Williams pitching in there. I feel like she shines the most, she being Casey Williams, in slower pieces where, you know, she can really show off her voice as opposed to some of the earlier stuff where, you know, the lyrics are more fast running together. And this was a... If I remember the scene correctly, this is when she's top on, on top of the Queen Lancer and is dealing with... Uh, what the fuck that guy's name is? You know who I'm talking about, the sea monster. Because I know we've got Kevin the dragon, Monstro the whale, I think. No, that's its official name. I don't know the actual one. Or fan name. The, the strings just... Working it in the background. And just that string, the strings hang on to the end. Like I said, the back half of volume six is probably one of the weakest storytelling for me. And that is just comparative to the beginning, where we got lore dumped and had the Brunswick Farm, which, in my opinion, was some of the best horror animation I've seen. Again, I've... You can't really go wrong with the Ruby songs. There's a few that don't suit my taste. But that is more of a personal issue as opposed to a wider issue. And I think volume six might have been the last time we had Ein Lee do art. Again, I don't know. I don't keep up to date with that stuff intentionally. Very casual unless it comes to the weapons and all that jazz. Yeah, this, I know that uh, Caleb Hayes stars in it. This is probably one of the best character themes, in my opinion. You've got that swelling voice, and then it sort of falls down. This is, you know, a very grand entrance for, as it says, a hero. And overall, this was probably one of my favorite volumes. Make it partially that swell up. And then just, you know, pull the bottom out to let the, the chugging guitar and drums take over in the background. Yeah, like I said, this is probably one of my favorite character themes ever. I mean, beyond the obvious stuff like the Metal Gear Rising Revenge soundtrack... Bury the Light and Devil Trigger. This is a good one.
Yeah, you got that chugging guitar in the background. I... Ironwood was, till the beginning of Volume 8, I think the best written character ever in this series. Not ever. That opens a whole bunch of worm, can of worms. More like barrels of worms, but... For Ruby, he was, in my opinion, the best written character. Because you could see the logic in his plan, in my opinion. Volume 8 did some funky things with him. Not a fan of his semblance. I believe I've heard it spoken of as, and this is other people's words, so grain of salt and all that jazz, weaponized autism. Someone, as someone who's not on the spectrum and all that, again, someone else's words, take mine with a grain of salt and all that. But metal is not the greatest semblance in terms of design. And all in all, this is just a wonderful character theme. Portrays the ideals of the character very well. This was also a wonderful fight. One of these days I hope to get to this in my fight scene analysis because just... Well, I may not be particularly well versed in... Uh, uh, participating in firefights the design of the fight itself is lovely you know the whole staging transitions use of environment that was the type of fight that everyone watched Ruby for but yeah this is probably one of the best character themes in Ruby and along with that, best fight scenes accompanying it. And in my opinion, one of the best volumes within the show. Now we have volume 8. I reacted to this on the channel. At the very end, there's going to be a little you know, pop-up box if you want to go through my reaction of that. This from my understanding, is going to be the last volume that Jeff Williams works on as a lead writer. And while I said I would be doing a reaction to it, I did not end up doing that purely because I was not the greatest fan of it as a whole. I actually had to listen through it again before this to get a better grasp of it as a whole so I could actually pick a song. But in the end, I went with something slow, melodic, with Casey's voice in the forefront. You've got that little string intro. And that is, that little, da, 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 is something I have noticed a lot within Casey's singing. That each singer has their small tells. But that little, da, 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 is a major sign of hers. Again. Very nice composition. You've got the voice, the strings, and piano to just form a nice, solid foundation for the singing. It's 
switching the placement of the piano and strings. It's wild thinking that this voice used to be the one all the way back in volume one. I mean, she was talented then, but here it's absolutely wild thinking, you know, just comparing the two, you know, within such a short time frame for me. Again, the strings taken forefront here. The sort of call and response we have here, or not call and response, but trading main spotlight with the vo her voice and the strings. I think that works wonderfully. And while I may act like I know exactly what's what, I really don't. I am just going off of my experience being a musician and playing a lot of music with saxophone, oboe, even recorder that all of us were forced to play when we were in elementary school. I think that might end up dating me a little bit. Again, I, I truly enjoy this style of music. Daily listening, I often end up listening to like Ghost in the Rain by Beast in Black, Battle Beast, Boston, Pink Floyd, Eagles, stuff like that. But this this will always have a special place in my listening rotation and repertoire. It just sort of reminds me of simpler times. Because I remember starting out, I'll, I'll do that reminiscing after but you've got that nice vocal melody on top of everything and the piano in the background strings forming a nice bass so that in those moments of not silence but, you know, those sort of break between notes, it's not jarring. You know, like it fades out into the nice string background. But yeah, this was the end of an era. Because from what I heard, he did a lot of stuff like Blood Gulch, and all of that for Red vs. Blue, which I started watching, then dropped off due to copyright stuff just biting my ass. And I truly can't think of a better person to hand the reins to than Casey Lee Williams. You know, having her own band, OK Goodnight, or whatever it's called, one of their songs being featured heard here, I truly have enjoyed this little trip down memory lane, you know, uh, lockbox of the past 
whatever you want to call it. Before I go into a little rambling about myself, there's going to be a link down below for the Ruby Reacts Discord server. I'm on there, a whole bunch of other guys. They're, I find their reactions to be truly lovely when I do end up going through all that. Yeah, we've got Black Ghost Face, uh, Dimmy Dog, Red the Royal, Grievous, Double Hit. All those guys should maybe be heating up a bit in terms of conversation. But link's going to be down below. Check that out if you want. And for those of you who are there from it, hello. Hope your day is going well. So shifting from the music onto Ruby itself. Ruby is always going to hold a special place in this channel's history. Because that is where I really ended up getting, you know, all 32 of you to subscribe. A lot of you have ended up coming here from my anime reactions. Some maybe are even here for from um, The Witcher and gameplay stuff. I've been doing a lot of like Bioshock. And for those of you who are really old, you might even remember the Battlefront 2 playthroughs. When I had to try and resize everything, I didn't have any actual editing software. And I was on an absolute piece of shit toaster. But now, Ruby is what really set me forward in my reaction journey, I feel. Because it, one, gave me a larger audience to reach. Because there is a built-in fan base that, at least when I was really deep into the Ruby fandom, I was actively looking for new reactors to watch. And some of them I'm still watching to this day just with different shows. I mean, someone who I wouldn't have found is Red the Royal, and he, at least in part, helped inspire me to actually go forward with this. But, yeah, that's, that's enough of me reminiscing. You guys know the drill at this point. Stuff down below, the Ruby Reacts Discord, I finished up watching Goblin Slayer, so after Goblin's Crown, if you want to put a show that I might want to react to, preferably something relatively short, just throw it down there. There's going to be a survey. You guys know the drill. It's going to chill a bit for likes. Stick around if you want to see something new. There's going to be the Ruby Volume 8 reaction up here. And something else that you might find worthwhile watching. But that's it for me. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful New Year. I think Chinese New Year is coming up soon. But yeah, until next time. This is Elvin Prince, signing out.